Good morning and night, guys. My name is Miss Sunshine. Welcome back to more of the Walsingham Files. Now, before we get started, I just want to let you guys know the developers reached out to me and said that this here, remember the last time I kept checking to see if there was anything inside of the fire. There is, or there was, so let's see, uh, item. And I'll show you guys this. Okay, I found it. I couldn't believe what that old fisherman was saying, but it turns out it was all true. Take a look inside my storage unit. The code is Lexi's birthday. So, thank you developers, Sapphire Dragon Productions, uh, for letting me know that. They said it was a small glitch in the game, um, and that's why it wasn't there before, but now we should be able to progress, so let's get into it. So, I think we're going to go meet up with the other uh, rangers. The other Power Rangers. <laughs> okay, I know. Terrible joke. Terrible joke. Terrible. But, whatever. Bridge, don't you collapse. There's another tent. There's other tents. Let's go knock all of them down. Oh, oh, uh-uh. No, no, no. I saw that. That one was open. That one's open. And this is Camp Prescott. It's a lot bigger than Camp Ruby. That's how small the other camp was? Oh, goodness. Camp Prescott has always been there, been the more popular ground. It's right next to the river. It's got good fishing, and it can take a lot more people. Real good for class trips or family. So Camp Revere is more popular with the couples then. That's right. It's smaller, more private, and better for an enemy getaway. I guess that gives more credence to the possibility that our victims were a couple. Or they were up to something that they didn't want anyone else to see or hear. That is true. Let's check the tables. Let's check these. Any idea whose sleeping bag this is? Quite sure it belongs to the woman at the bridge. The other two campers had us take all their stuff with them. That's fine, but you're sure you have all their stuff and haven't let them touch any of it, right? Sorry. That's right. Good. Oh, we're checking everything. This detective is on the case. Empty bin? We collected the bag. Sorry. Ugh. For you to look through it. Mostly had beer cans and some bones of barbecue. Okay, good. Show me after we finish interrogating the campers. Open up, campers. Make sure you're all dressed. Nothing nasty going on. Did the park provide firewood, Oscar? Nope. As I said before, we don't provide any hospitality services. What type of camp are you running, sir? Whoever cut this good, whoever cut this is good with an axe. The length is pretty uniform. So you said that you were quite sure that the axe wasn't the murder weapon. I still am. Just saying that whoever cut this wood is an experienced outdoors person. That's all. Here's me. Open up. That's a lot of tents. Like I said before, Camp Prescott is way more popular than Camp Revere. How many other campers did you round up? Three, including the woman at the bridge. But there are five tents out here. Some people bring more than one tent so they're not too cramped up when they go camping. One tent for sleeping, then another for their supplies and other things. Never heard of that before. Not that I'm into camping much. Oh yeah, you should see the things that some campers do. Some of them even bring these massive inflatable tents with numerous rooms. Device, check that tent. It's empty, ma'am. Alright, thank you. Detectives funny on the case. With the exception of the tent belonging to the woman at the bridge, they should all be empty. The other two campers insisted on bringing their other valuables, then put everything else away. I couldn't, re uh, I couldn't really deny them that given that a criminal action had taken, had happened at the park. What is wrong with me today? Okay. We're checking all the tents. I'm going to check all of them. Check it. Anything inside the prize? This one's empty too, ma'am. Okay, check this one. Check it. This one's empty too, ma'am. Right. We're going to get to this one here. Hold up. Wait a minute. Another fish stick. Okay. I'm collecting these because I want to know if it's like, I don't know. This is the tent that belonged to the woman at the bridge. Anything interesting inside, DeVry? Sleeping bag, battery powered radio, flashlight, Swiss Army knife, and a book in French. What's the book? It's called, 
Ooh. Yes, that's what it's called. If my high school French doesn't tell me, I would love to take French. I didn't take it in high school. I would love to, though. Then I believe it's about a high school girl on her last days of high school and how she is feeling pressured about high school, what direction her life should take after high school. Say high school like five more times. It's a coming of age story, I think. Thrilling stuff. Hey, don't knock it till you try it. I love these high school coming of age and first love stories. Some of them are good. Some of them. That's surprising. Wouldn't have pegged you at the type. Anyway, bag the other stuff and we'll leave it at the ranger station for now. Did we check this one? I've seen enough. Let's go up and interrogate the campers now. Fine. Wait, wait, wait. Let's check the fire. Cool to the touch. Don't think anyone had a fire going this morning. Okay. Just wanted to check. Just wanted to double check and make sure. Let's double check and make sure. Are the campers up here? Uh, campers! Hopefully you're fully dressed. You're not nude or anything. No. Good. Why can't I check the bulletin board? Fine. Carl, what are you doing out here? Captain Visconti from the state troopers told me to keep all the campers in the ranger station and stand guard outside. Is Andy inside with them? Negative. They asked him to go with them to verify all the entrances and exits to the park were blocked. How about the north gate? Some police from some other towns came in to relieve us. How about the paramedic we requested? She's inside with the witness right now. She wants to get her to the hospital, but Captain Visconti still has the park on lockdown. I see. Well, I have the detective on the case with me, so you can so can you please let us in? Yes, sir. Okay. Let's interrogate all of them. Every single one of you bastards are guilty. You all did it. The conspiracy. I don't know why I'm collecting these. Don't judge. In real life, I hate fish sticks. I love her little blue hair. Yes, you're awesome. You're amazing. Anyway, hi, my name is Sarah Fitzgerald, and I'm a detective with the police department. Do you mind if I ask you two some questions? Sure, no problem. Like, we have a choice. I love her instantly. She's awesome. And the guy's pretty handsome, too. Anyway. Hey, watch your attitude, Missy. Sorry, please excuse my girlfriend. We've been held here at the cabin for the past four hours without any explanation whatsoever, so can so you can only imagine we're a bit tense right now. We have rights, you know. You can't just arrest us without telling us why. Darling, if you'd been arrested, you'd be held behind those bars. Over there, sorry. You see behind you? Over there? Ah, oh, whatever. Not so exactly why you're being held, I don't know, but it sure makes it useful for me as I can interrogate you two right now. I will give it to you that today's things seem to be a bit crazy, but I assure you that after I'm done talking to everyone here, I'll do what I can to get you out. It's good to know, Detective. What do you want to know? Name and contact details are always a good place to start. Ah, wait, wait, wait. This would be a good detective, darn it. Hold on, hold on. Drop something. That's fine. That's okay. Where, where is, where is it, where is it? Ha, huh. I'm right here. Wait, wrong page. Goodness, where's my page? Where's my page? Where's my page? My page is here. Got it, got my page. Okay. What's your name, sir? We already gave those to the ranger. I'm not the ranger, okay? I'm a detective and you will get that information again. Darn it. Don't get me started. Let's see. Campers. Names. Oh, we're gonna get all this information. The sooner we answer the detective's questions, the sooner we'll be. Up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the right spirit. Thank you for your cooperation, sir. As for you, you may look awesome. But whatever. Miguel Rodriguez and Linda Coleman. You guys are on my file, okay? Yes, and. Linda Coleman. Got it. Mr. Rodriguez, what time did you and your girlfriend arrive at the camp? Let's see. Arrived around 2 p.m. yesterday. 
Where did you come in from? Let's see. Came from Boston. I think that's, uh, I think PAX is actually going on in Boston right now. I've never been. Seems like it'd be really cool to go. I'm studying there right now. Nice. So you're not from around here? No, I'm originally from Florida. Gotta write that down. Originally from Florida. But I moved to New York for my master's. Alright. When I have time, I drive up to Boston to spend the weekend with Linda. Willowdale isn't exactly the most famous park in Massachusetts, nor is it particularly close to Boston. Why did you two pick it for your getaway? Linda's already been here, been everywhere in Massachusetts, and I actually heard the fishing is pretty good in Willowdale. It was a nice choice for the two of us, sorry. That's why you picked Camp Prescott over Camp Revere? The fishing? Yeah, everyone says Camp Revere is more romantic than Camp Prescott, but Prescott was really the best choice for both of us. For me, obviously, there's the fishing. For, as for Linda, my dear girl can't live two seconds without the internet, and there is just no signal in Camp Revere. Babe, it's you who I can't live without. Internet may be ten minutes. Oh gosh. Oh, I love you. Oh, you're so adorable. Uh, uh, shut up. We'll stick on topic, guys, okay? Young love, chief. Young love. Shut it, detective. Shut it, officer. Whatever. Th see, me and Sarah, we're on the same page, okay? Okay, so you pitched up a tent yesterday afternoon, and I presume you stayed at the campsite the whole evening, right? That's right. Who did you meet during your time at the camp? There was this old couple that was wrapping up. They left around 4 p.m. Let's see. Old couple left at 4 p.m. We're getting places. Oh, we're getting places. Did you get their names? No, sorry. Anyone else? We met the lady that's upstairs with the paramedic. Her tent was right next to ours. Did you get her name? I think it was Monique or Monica or something like that. What was it again, baby? I'm pretty sure it was Monique. Okay. Monique. And that's actually my middle name. Just a fun fact. But no last name? I don't know what time period you're from, lady, but most people nowadays don't give out their last names unless they're close or it's for work. And this Monique lady came to the camp alone? Nah, she came with her girlfriend, but they had a massive fight and stormed off. What was the fight about? No idea. They were speaking to each other in French. Ah. Uh, so speaks in French. Nice. Mr. Rodriguez, surely you were able to catch a little of it since Spanish has similarities to French. Now, my Spanish is pretty weak, and that couple were speaking really fast. Did she talk about it afterwards? She just apologized and cried for a while. We let her eat a bit of our barbecue and then had some light talk before she turned in early. Did you get the name of her girlfriend? Nope. Any other details about this Monique lady? She says she's a fitness instructor. Let's see. Fitness instructor. Fitness destructor. Gotcha. She mostly... I did that on purpose, by the way. She mostly asked us about ourselves. I could tell that she didn't want to talk about her problems. But didn't you go to Camp Revere to check it out? I mean, how else would you know there was no signal there? Yeah, we passed both camps at around 2 p.m. when we arrived at Camp Revere. When we arrived, and Camp Revere was completely empty. Camp Prescott only had the elderly couple when we got there. Interesting. And did you hear or see anything weird this morning? I was asleep and was only woken up by the park rangers who said we had to go to the ranger station right away. And you, Miss Coleman? I heard Monique go out for a run, but that was it. I pretty much went back to sleep. After that, I was pretty happy until I was brutally awakened by the park rangers. Hey, we're just doing our jobs, Missy. Okay, don't blame us. We are getting somewhere, people. We're getting somewhere. Detective Sonny on the case. Then let us out already. We didn't do anything wrong. The park ranger found us asleep in our tents. We obviously, we're obviously not the killers. We didn't say anything about killers. At all. Killers. 
Yes, yeah, see? We are on it. Killers, no one said anything about there being a murder. Oh, please, we heard everything when the two rangers started talking to each other on their radios. That's why Captain Visconti wanted Kara to, to guard outside the building. Ranger Peterson, you really have to reprimand your rangers for this. Indeed, I do. I am so sorry, Detective. They're both pretty green and really don't have much experience in criminal proceedings. As it is, barely anyone comes into this park. Most of what we deal with every day is related to wildlife, not murder. I understand, Ranger, but your people may have really compromised the investigation. Well, that's it for now. I'll try to get the state troopers to let you two go. Thank you for your time. But not just yet. Not just yet. Because I want to talk to the... I want to talk to the girly. Let's, let's go upstairs. Yeah. He's in paramedic. This woman is not in the condition to talk right now. Can I help you? All right. Let's talk to you. Hi, I'm Detective Sarah Fitzgerald, and this is Officer Devise. Is the woman lying down the person that found the crime scene? Yes, it is. Can you wake her up? We need to talk to her right away. Absolutely not. This woman is in terrible shape. She's in severe shock and is horribly dehydrated from all the vomiting. That's okay. What she needs is to go to the hospital. Aren't you running this show? Get her an IV drip, then she can talk to you. All right, cool your jets, darling. I ain't exactly all knowing when it comes to the situation here either. So you said that you're the detective handling this case. No, I just said my name. I just said I was a detective. I never said I was handling any case. Okay, get your facts straight. Nah, it looks like the Massachusetts State Troopers are running this show. Then why haven't they put one of their own detectives on the case? That's the bit that got me puzzled, but all I know is that I'm on this case and that I need to talk to everyone who was in the park this morning. Well, if you want to talk to her, then you'll need to get her access to an IV drip pronto. Alright, let's check everything. That's a lot of bunk beds you have here. Like I said before, this park used to be way more popular and need, needed way more stranger, rangers sorry, to staff it 24-7. In the 80s, we had something like six permanent rangers. They had power rangers. Look, another Warrenville High Canteen. This one says class 14. Maybe whoever owns this might know one of the victims. If it's a high school, then they only have four grades in it. The canteen says class of 14. And the and the one we found at the campsite said class of 09. Whoever owns this didn't attend at the same time and doesn't know the victim. But Warrenville is a small town anyway, right? They might still know each other. That is true. Oscar, do you know who owns this canteen? That's Andy's, but I'm quite sure he just found it around here. Official police is that we official policy is that we keep stuff like that in the lost and found box, but after stuff has been there for a year, it's pretty much free for all. A canteen is a pretty gross thing to take from a lost and found box, yeah, especially a year after it was found. Exactly. Come on now, with lunch boxes and canteens, we always clean out the food and drink straight away so it doesn't stink up the office. So I will admit that it's a pretty weird thing to take home. What can I say? Andy is cheap like that. And you're sure Andy didn't attend Warrenville High? Good. Good, officer. Good questions here. Quite sure. I was the one that reviewed his application, and he graduated from a school in El Dorado, California. Ooh. All right, guys. I am going to save this. Let's, let's save it to there. And I'm going to go ahead and end the video because I am running out of time, but this is getting good. I love it. It is amazing. Oh, so much is going down. So many questions that still need to be asked. Don't worry. Detective Sunny is on the case. And thank you guys so much for joining me for this. And until next time we meet, stay sunny side up, guys. Bye.